Hello and welcome. In this video, let's look at the decision rules of MaxiMax, MaxiMin, MiniMax Regret, and then let's apply those rules to a decision-making situation. The first thing to consider is that these rules correspond to different types of decision maker. The first type of decision maker that we'll look at is the risk seeker. This is an optimist. This is the one who looks at the best case scenario, trying to maximize the maximum profits from the different options being considered. The risk seeker will ignore the downsides of risk and the decision rule that they will use is maximize the maximum profit or maxi max. Let's now look at the risk averse decision maker. This manager is going to assume the worst case scenario. What's the worst possible outcome? And then they're going to choose the best option from the worst case scenario. The risk averse decision maker will ignore the upside of risk. And the decision rule that applies here is maxi min or maximize the minimum profits. The third type of decision maker we'll look at is what I call the sore loser. Now the sore loser doesn't look at the worst case or the best case scenarios. The sore loser wants to avoid the opportunity cost or the regret from making the wrong decision. And the rule that they will employ is minimize the maximum regret. Let's now move on to an example and I'll demonstrate these three decision rules with some numbers. I've got an activity open from the study hub. If you'd like to try this on your own, you could pause the video now and continue rolling it after you've given it a try. Let's look at the requirement determine which project would be chosen using the three decision rules. Maxi max, maxi min, mini max regret. Well, the first step to solving a problem like this is to recognize which dimension of the table has our decision and which dimension has the uncertainty. Looking at the table, I see that the column headings are labeled projects. So these are the options that we have to choose from. And now I see the rows. This is the market state. So we see the worst case scenario, a diminishing market. And we see the best case scenario, an expanding market. Then in the middle we have that static market. We're going to ignore the probability column here because we were not asked for the expected value decision rule, which goes with the risk neutral decision maker. This is the decision maker who bases their decision on the most likely outcome. We weren't asked for that, so we won't use it here. Now, maxi max, that is the decision rule for the risk seeker. They want to maximize the maximum profit. So I look at these projects. I see that project one delivers the highest profit of $1,000. So that is the project that I choose. I ignore everything that I see in the worst case and other scenarios. Maximize the maximum profit, $1,000. I choose project number one. Now, if we move to the maxi min decision rule, that's the decision rule for the risk averse decision maker. They're going to assume the worst case scenario. And we see that's the diminishing market. So if we have a look at the diminishing market, 
we see the best option in the worst case scenario is project three. So no matter what, $180 profit will be earned. Again, the maxi min rule ignores the other situations, only looking at worst case scenario. The final decision rule to consider here is mini max regret. That's the decision rule for the sore loser. It's also the trickiest of these three. So let's dive into that. The first thing that we'll do is reproduce the column headings and the rows. And we're going to build a new table that we will call a regret table. I set up my regret table and I've used my projects as my column headings the market states for my rows. Next, I'm going to look at each market state and find the project that gives the highest profit for each market state. For example, in a diminishing market, project three gives the highest profit. Next, we compare the profits that we would earn for the other projects against the best option for each market state. So if the market turns out to be diminishing, the best choice I could be, make would be project three. If I choose project three and the market turns out to be diminishing, I have no loss, best option. However, if I choose project two, well, I missed out on 180. I made the wrong decision. That cost me 180. And then for project one, if I choose project one and the market turns out to be diminishing, well, I lost out on 80. That is how we build the regret table. So if you want to pause the video here, you could finish this regret table. If the market turns out to be static, the best choice would be project two, earning 500. So if we chose project two and the market were static, we'd have no loss. Project one, we'd say to ourselves, aw shucks, we could have earned 500 but we chose project one, we're only earning 200, so we missed out on 300. Last but not least, for project three, that would be 310. If the market turns out to be expanding, well, the best option would be project one, earning $1,000. So if we chose project one and the market ended up expanding, that would be the best choice. We'd have no loss. If we chose project two and the market turned out to be expanding, we'd have a regret of $400. We'd say to ourselves, we missed out on $400 by making the wrong choice. And if we chose project three, and the market turned out to be expanding, well, we'd say, oof, we've lost out on $800 from making the wrong decision. After we've completed our regret table, next we identify the maximum regret under each option. So now we look at each project and under project three, there's a chance we'll have an $800 regret. Under project two, there's a chance we'll have a $400 regret. Under project one, $300. Now that we found the maximum regret for each option, we wanna choose the project that minimizes that maximum regret. And I see the smallest number of the regret row is 300. So following mini max regret, I would choose project one. Performance management students, I hope this video shed some light on this tricky topic. Your next step, go into the study hub, go into the practice questions, and try a practice question on your own.